I rise today to speak in support of the, the Liberal motion introduced by the leader of the Liberal Party. I'll be sharing my time with the, the member for uh, Mel Peck. Uh, just to refresh uh, memory of those who will be listening in, or those of us here in the House today, uh, Mr. Speaker, I just want to again speak to the, to the motion which says, the House is calling on the government to take several simple and immediate actions to reduce the growing income inequality in Canada, including a rollback of its recent employment insurance premium hikes, which inflict a higher relative burden on low to modest income workers, uh, B, ending the punitive new clawback of employment insurance benefits that are discouraging many Canadians from working while on claim, C, making tax credits such as a family caregiver tax credit refundable so that low-income Canadians are not excluded, D, making the registered disability savings plan available to sufferers of chronic diseases such as multiple sclerosis, and E, removing interest charges from the federal component of student loans. Now, Mr. Speaker, anyone listening to our concerns and those that we have spelled out in our, in our Opposition Day motion can clearly see that this is meant to uh, address the income inequality in our country. And uh, we've been hearing from Canadians from coast to coast to coast who are being impacted by the changes that the Conservative government have uh, continued to implement since they got elected. And, and the irony in all of this, Mr. Speaker, is that when this government came to power, there was actually a $14 billion surplus. And mm. that surplus was, at, was blown in the first year. It was squandered in the first year Shameful. that they were in power. Now, all of a sudden, we see that they're coming up with all of these initiatives that are harmful to low- and middle-income right. Canadians. This is a government that increased the deficit in fact, in the first couple of years, even before there was a recession, or they would admit to a recession, increase the deficit by $56 billion. And what have they done, Mr. Amazing. Speaker? In the six years that they've been in power, they've increased the country's debt by $100 billion. Brilliant. This is, doesn't make sense, Mr. Speaker. And then you turn around and you watch as this government, in fact, gives large corporations tax breaks to the tune of a savings of $6 billion annually. All at the same time, while we see low- and middle-income people suffering at the hands of this government and the decisions that it's been taken. And I can cite example after example where the new rules concerning the working wall on a claim project is having a detrimental impact on Canadians from coast to coast to coast, and it's not just in Atlantic Canada, Mr. Speaker, because as you know, my riding is in Newfoundland and Labrador. But this impacts not only Atlantic Canadians, this impacts those who have to avail of EI while on maternity leave, those who are on availing of EI while giving compassionate care uh, to sick relatives. Uh, this is not just about people who work in seasonal industries, although they are impacted too. This is a serious issue, this whole change to the employment insurance program that came about without any consultation. In fact, people will tell you, uh, they got their check and, and it was less than what they were expecting and they had no knowledge of why that was the case. And I've had people tell me, if they're going to take 50 cents from the very first dollar that I earn, so every dollar they're going to take 50 cents from, I get half of what my paycheck should be, and then you take into account all the expenses associated with going to work, whether it's childcare, whether it's transportation costs, whether, uh, whatever those expenses may be, Mr. Speaker, and it comes out in the end to people saying, well, where's the incentive? Where's the incentive for me to take part-time work or to look for full-time work? if in fact the government is going to turn around and penalize us for doing so. It is not right, Mr. Speaker, and you know, unless meaningful action is taken, the gap between the rich and the poor in our country will in fact continue to increase. And according to the Conference Board of Canada, independent economic research organization, it says income equality has increased over the last 20 years. We do not need this government to be making it even worse for low and middle income earners. 
And what's interesting yeah. about this, and it's not just on the, the issues that I've spelled out that, uh, that are topics of our Opposition Day motion today, but even the issue around fleet separation owner-operator policies that the Department of, Def of uh, Fisheries and Oceans was contemplating, or at least would not say they weren't contemplating, getting rid of. What that would have meant, Mr. Speaker, would have been that independent fishermen, and, and these aren't wealthy fishermen who really needed those policies in place, would have enabled them to continue to fish as independent fishermen selling their product to whomever they could sell their product to. If they had done away with those policies, Mr. Speaker, it would have meant that large corporations would have been able to fish the same product. Now, there is no way the independent fishermen could compete with these large corporations. So, but that's what we see with this government. We see the focus continually on helping the wealthy, helping the wealthy uh, get wealthier, while we see low-income middle earners being penalized. And what is happening today is that people are getting so discouraged. They really don't know whether they should even complain about it because no one seems to be listening. Which is why, Mr. Speaker, as the Liberal opposition here in the House of Commons, we felt it was absolutely essential that we come forward with this motion today to try and impress on the government how important it is that they reconsider some of the policies that they've implemented. Uh, certainly, if they were to review them, uh, and we've asked, of course, the Minister of Human Resources to do this, uh, again, it, it would appear that her responses to questions that are raised with respect uh, to the uh, working on a claim project is that they, they either don't understand the implication or they're refusing uh, to acknowledge that this is, in fact, happening, that maybe this is what they intended to do from the very beginning. Well, what we say is that where there's a will, there's a way. So if you want to change, if you're now being aware of the impact, the negative impact that that new change, that new policy is having on Canadians, now that you're aware of it, uh, because we've been saying it time and time again in the House of Commons, and Canadians have been writing to us to make the point, please get the message across. If you're listening at all, not just to us, but if you're listening to Canadians who are being negatively impacted by this, then change it. Here, here. There's no harm in admitting you've made a mistake, especially if it's going to be to the benefit of Canadians. There are so many measures this government is taking that are totally unnecessary. One being increasing the number of MPs in the House of Commons. And when I think that they're going to be an additional 30 members of parliament and all the costs associated with that. And then I hear from people in my riding who are having difficulty making ends meet. Bad priorities. It, it just doesn't make sense. Yep. You have to question the priorities of a government who can't seem to relate to Canadians who are having difficulty uh, with the pressures that are put on them on a daily basis, with the increased costs of living, uh, no matter whether it's a child going to post-secondary education or whether you're trying to raise a young family or mortgage rates being what they are, if you cannot relate to that, and this would appear to be the situation with this government, then what we're seeing here is, again, the wealthy getting wealthier and the low middle income earners uh, making less. And when you look at the people that are getting in touch with us, you know, and I'll, I'll give you an example of a lady who, um, in my riding from Southeast Bite, now my riding in fact is predominantly a rural riding, and it's one where people try to make ends meet, in a lot of cases they're able to get seasonal work, and they work very hard. They want to work full time, they want to work uh, annually, uh, year in, year out, but if the work is not available, they will do the seasonal work, and that's important too, Mr. Speaker, because there are employers who have seasonal industries. So if the people aren't available to work in those industries, then again, that becomes an issue, and the industry suffers, as does the individual who can't avail of the jobs. So, Mr. Speaker, 
we have to change our focus. This government has to start thinking about those who really need support in our country here, here. and be there for them. Here, here.